We back. We back with the whiteboard. Back with the whiteboard. All right, the top 10 reasons from a sales perspective why you should start a podcast. Let's talk about it. Number one, immediate brand recognition. People know who you are. If you start to build an audience, hey, they come to listen to you. I've got my caricature on my podcast cover. People know what I look like, right? Or they watch the video version. They recognize me. Immediate brand recognition is number one. Number two, I used to think that I wanted to have an opportunity to have a seat at the table, right? I wanted to be invited to the leadership discussions. I wanted to be at the table for the big picture stuff. Well, guess what? When you start a podcast, it's your table. You get to invite people to your table rather than hoping to be invited to somebody else's. So as you start to build a platform, you're probably going to be able to attract more viewers. You're going to attract, you know, higher profile guests, and they're coming to you to have a conversation. Pretty cool. Number three, you get to have an association with other experts, right? For those of you that know me in the stop loss world, I exhausted everything I knew about stop loss. So I had to come up with something else. So rather than continually try to be an expert on everything, why not invite other experts onto your podcast? You get to talk to them, ask questions, obviously pick their brain, but then you have an association with people that are experts in their relative field. Number four, this one's important to me on a personal level. I get to represent my values to the world. I don't infuse everything I think and believe into my podcast, but I get to choose the things that I wanna discuss, what I stand for, family values, you know, personal accountability, um, responsibility, taking care of your own health, all of those things get intertwined into podcast conversations. So you get to represent your value system to the world because it's your podcast. Number five, control the conversation. And I don't mean you hijack the conversation. I don't mean you talk over people. I mean, you get to control what conversations are being had which guests you get to invite on the on the, the podcast, what subjects you want to discuss. I even you know lay out in advance questions that I want to at, ask the guests and share it with that guest so they have a chance to prepare. But you're controlling the flow of conversation even if you're asking questions and you get to kind of drive the ship. So if that's something that's interesting to you, then you should consider, you know, do I get to have an opportunity to kind of control what is being discussed? A podcast is a medium in order to do that. Now, switching over to the purple, going down to number six, you're selling value, not a product. You're selling ideas. You're having conversations. You're giving free information away by having, you know, discussions with experts in their fields, like I said. So you're actually providing value, and that's all you're selling. Nobody has to pay to listen to my podcast. Nobody pays to be on my podcast. But the value that I hope in the open market that's curated by these conversations is free. And I'm not selling anybody a product. There's no, you know, action item at the end of the podcast to say, click here and buy my course. It is free flow of information. It is value driven only. Number seven, you build rapport like never before. And yes, that rhymes. Want to fight about it? Build rapport like never before. People know you. Hopefully people like you. People trust you. That takes a long time to do in a normal traditional sales uh, funnel. But what if you had a podcast where somebody's listened to 10 episodes of you talk with other people first, then you approach them uh, about a sales call, then you have an actual conversation with them about what you do. You've already got instantaneous rapport built because they feel like they know you. Number eight, again, instantaneous rapport, instantaneous credibility as well. That kind of goes back to the association with other experts, the rapport that you've built, but the credibility, if you're having intelligent conversations, if you're weighing in, in a way that actually provides additional value to the conversation and you're not just interviewing somebody, the credibility about what you do, you know, my podcast is around self-funding. I had the stop loss videos in the past. People trust information and the expertise I provide in those fields. And so I have credibility. I've gone to conferences before where people recognize me instant cred credibility when you walk in a room. That is huge, right? Especially if you're trying to sell. Number nine, let's be honest, generating leads. If you put a podcast video out there and it gets a thousand views uh, on LinkedIn, or you get a four or 5,000 views of a picture of you promoting the podcast, well, guess what? Eventually people are going to come to you and say, what do you do? 
Or I can find out sometimes on LinkedIn, you know, where the people are viewing my video, who's watching them, where do they work? You know what? I have the opportunity to go and approach those uh, places proactively and say, hey, I, I think you probably checked out my podcast or we've had a message back and forth about it. Yeah. What do you say we uh, set aside some time and do a demo? And usually, I mean, not usually, almost all the time, the answer is yes. And so you're generating leads, whether intentionally or indirectly, it is still happening. I've had people that have listened to the podcast for six months, then send me a message and say, hey, I finally checked out PlanSite. Sounds really cool. Can we set up a demo? I didn't have to do any additional work to drive that sales lead. So lead generation, huge. Last but not least, consider this. Yes, it takes some time. I've got to reach out to guests. I've got to schedule. I've got to draft questions, have conversations. There's a little bit of editing afterward. I might spend about three to four hours a week in addition to my job at PlanSite, curating this content, putting together something that I trust, that I believe in, that's at a high enough level that I feel is appropriate to put out. But guess what? It's now reusable. You shoot one podcast, you've got an hour of content. You could you could cut up three, four, five clips from one podcast, and that'll be available in a library of your content in perpetuity. So consider, even though it is a little work to start and a little work to do, how valuable having 100, 200 videos that you could send out as lead generation, you could send out as a follow-up to a conversation. You could say, hey, Mike, I know you were thinking about this. I actually made a video about this about eight months ago. Here you go. Credibility, rapport, value, but you've got content that is available at the click of a button that you can send out rather than having to schedule a call on having to be there in person for every conversation. So these are the top 10 sales reasons to start a podcast. I'm sure I missed some. I'm sure you have other ideas. You may disagree with some of them, but I'd love to hear your opinion on the top 10 reasons that a salesperson should start a podcast. Thank you. Good luck.